ready for some semi-final action in Class 4A. We've got both games tonight, and both should be dandies. we got the Eden Prairie Eagles going up against the Creighton Aram Hall Raiders. Creighton Aram Hall has two losses on the season. They lost to Edina, and guess who they lost to in their other game? Eden Prairie. And then the nightcap is an all-South Suburban semifinal game between the Lakeville North Panthers and the Apple Valley Eagles. And they split during the regular season. They're in the same conference as I just mentioned. So a couple of great games coming your way here from the Target Center in downtown Minneapolis. This is KDHL Radio's 70th year of baseline-to-baseline coverage of the Boys State High School basketball tournament continues. Our coverage is service of the Gusty Basketball and Leadership Camp in St. Peter. Garlic's Water Conditioning of Faribault, McMurray Auction Company in Kenya. By Cashwise Foods, Oatana. Cannon Valley Water is part of Water Systems Company of Southern Minnesota. Taji Jewelry, Downtown Kenyon, Pine Island Lumber, Goodyear County, ADA, and H&R Block, Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. Bring you our 70th year of coverage. Eden Prairie, 23 and 7 on the season. Creighton Aram Hall, 28 and 2, as I just mentioned. Their only two losses would be Eden Prairie during the regular season and the Dino. Was just told by one of the assistant coaches of Eden Prairie not too long ago what they plan on doing defensively to try and hold down this. Very potent offense. Creighton Aram Hall averages 80 points. They give up 61 a game. Eden Prairie averages 74 and gives up 63 points per contest. Eden Prairie's got a bunch of sophomores. Very good. These guys are going to be good for a couple of years here. Coming into this game, they have 278 threes on the season. Yeah, they're going to launch them. They let them fly like eagles, I guess. Basketball soaring through the air. Good crowd on hand here at the Target Center. A little larger crowd than we had last night. And one would expect that that would continue on into Saturday. Of course, tomorrow we'll have the Class A semifinal and double-A semifinal games here on KDHL. And then on Saturday, all the championship games. Of course, if Lakeville North does not come out on top, we would have their third-place game on a Saturday afternoon. Power 96 Radio. But we had another game before that. That's Eden Prairie and Creighton Aram Hall. That's the next one on the docket here. We just got done seeing a couple of Titans go down in Class 3A. The number one, the number two seed. Bye-bye. As far as the winner's bracket goes. Yep, we'll have a rematch of Creighton Aram Hall. Or excuse me, we'll have a rematch of uh, De La Salle in Austin, but it's going to be in the third place game, not the championship. Championship will find Columbia Heights playing Delano. And that's going to be one board crashing game. Both those teams, the reason they won, my opinion, crashing glass big time. So the Eden Prairie Eagles Cheerleaders are now being introduced to the crowd. And then they'll introduce the non-starters and the starters, so a lot of introductions yet to be completed before we get our game underway. Of course, Roy had games earlier today. Class A action got underway. The uh, Rushford-Peterson-Cass Lake-Bena game is in progress. The games that Roy had, Russell, Tyler, Ruth, and I told you they came into the tournament with a chip on their shoulder. They got the number four seed with one loss on the season. They absolutely blew out Hinkley-Finlayson, 87-70. to Earlier today, Mayor Lutheran beat the Norman Wabin 71-40. And the other game that Roy had, North Woods, the number two seed, had their way with Heritage Christian Academy. Of course, Heritage Christian came into the tournament with a record under 500. 
and Northwoods had no problem winning 74 to 36. That's what it was, 74 to 36. So let's get you updated on how Rushford Peterson is doing right now. Let's see here. Four minutes and 45 seconds to go in the second half. Cass Lake Bina has an eight-point lead on Rushford Peterson. That's right, 47-39. Cass Lake Bina, the number three seed. Well, now it's 47-41. So the Trojans are making a comeback down by six with four minutes and 21 seconds to go, according to the live stats. Rushford Peterson has three threes. Cass Lake has six. Cass Lake is 9 for 10 from the free throw line, and the Rushford Peterson is a plus 10 on the glass. Uncharacteristic of the Trojans, though, they have 16 turnovers, and Cass Lake Bina has 10. But it looks like they're staging a comeback here. The Trojans with 23 wins. Three guys are in double figures for Rushford Peterson. There's one guy in double figures for Cass Lake Bina, who also had just one loss of the season coming into the state tournament. These are the semifinals. The winners advance to the championship, and of course we'll have the championship game. We'll have all the championship games during our 70th year of baseline-to-baseline coverage of the Boise State High School Basketball Tournament here on KDHL and KDHLradio.com. The best way, the absolute best way to listen to our coverage is by downloading the free KDHL app. You heard me like It's free. Best four-letter word in the English language other than love, free. You just tap that app after you download it on your favorite mobile device. Click on Listen Live, and it's like you're right by the court. You're sitting right next to me, courtside, here at the Target Center. You'll hear those sneakers squeaking. You'll hear guys hollering out plays. I'm not kidding. Try it. Download it. It doesn't cost you a plug nickel. Both teams are back on the floor here at the Target Center where the big Timberwolves roam. The officials are getting acquainted with the official scorers across the way. When we return, we'll have your starting lineups for this game here tonight between Creighton Durham Hall and Eat Prairie. We'll do that in two minutes. Hi, this is Chris from Garlic's Water. Are you fed up with fighting rust stains and hard water problems at home? We have a system that can solve all your headaches, a Kinetical water system. We have a wide range of Kinetical water systems to fix any problem, big or small. Give me a call at 800-722-1282 or go online at garlicswater.com and let me show you what I can do to help. At Garlic's Water, your water has never been treated so well. Garlic's Water. The Gusty Basketball and Leadership Camp is designed to help each player from a highly skilled to beginners. This camp is for all age groups, boys and girls. The ultimate goal of the camp is to develop well-rounded basketball players, emphasizing discipline, poor presence, and team concepts. Each player will receive individual attention designed to help correct and improve areas of weakness and inexperience. Resident and day camperships are available. While this camp teaches fundamentals of basketball, kids also receive quality time used to discuss leadership, motivation, and positive living. Online registration is preferred at GustyBasketballCamp.com. Enrollment limited, filling fast. So go to GustyBasketball.com and register. You don't want to miss a Saturday morning clean farm retirement auction for Rod and Ron Stone in rural Claremont. Matt Merring's call begins at 9.30 Saturday morning at 10081 670th Street. This auction features John Deere equipment, tractors, and a combine, a 9610, also a John Deere 7200 planter, case XT60 skid loader, very clean twin screw farm grain trucks. If you can't be there, bid online at MerringAuction.com. Little Anita's dress is so pretty. The gingham print. It's 50% off select kids' spring dress up at JCPenney. Anita's mom and dad, too. Up to 50% off select spring fashion for him and her. I wonder where they shop. I'd say JCPenney. Hurry into JCPenney today for the final weekend of the 10 days of nonstop new fashion and beauty event. Plus, save up to 50% on great looks for the family and take an extra $10 off your $25 purchase with coupon. JCPenney. Style and value for all. Offers represent savings on regular original prices. Coupon valid 322 to 325. Some exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Now they're introducing the non-starters here at the Target Center. Well, 
the Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota Lynx, of course, perform professionally. And they have just introduced the cheerleaders. So they get all those pleasantries out of the way. And we'll be set to go. Well, there's a couple of great games earlier today with some very good talent on the floor. I was just talking to the gentleman from the Minnesota Basketball News. We're sharing some stories about all the tournaments that we've seen. Of course, Mr. Hagster has been to a lot of these. Many more than I have, and this is my 30th year of being at the Minnesota High School Basketball Tournament. It's a broadcaster anyway. I did uh, come up a few times when I was a kid and watched some games. So they've introduced the non-starters for Creighton Durham Hall. They're now going to introduce the non-starters for Eden Prairie. And we'll give you a few particulars here. Give you some stats. Service of H&R Block. They have offices in Lakeville, Owatonna, and Faribault. H&R Block. You get your maximum refund guaranteed. Eden Prairie averages 74, gives up 63 a game. David Flum is their head coach. Cannon Falls native in his 15th year with 308 wins. They're shooting 48% from the field and 43% from trade land. Creighton Aram Hall shoots 32% from three-point range and shoots 55% from the field. Jerry Klein Jr. is their head coach. They average 80. They give up 61. They lost to Edina on December 7th. And not that long ago, on February 28th, Eden Prairie beat them 65-63 was the final score in that game. 65-63 was the final. Eden Prairie in their black with some gray mixed in with the black on their shorts. It says EP in red. It says Eden Prairie across their chests. And the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders are in their white with purple trim. Purple numerals. Looks like all of them are wearing purple tennies here. There was a year or two ago, and everybody had different colored tennies. I guess that was the trend then, and haven't seen that much this year. I've seen a couple of different colored socks. So for Creighton Durham Hall, their starters, Cy Chapman. He's a 6'8 senior, averages 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists. Jaden King, a 6'5", junior, averages 16 points, 3 rebounds, just over an assist. Daniel Oturu, heading the University of Minnesota, is a 6'10", senior, averages 22 points, 12 rebounds, and 2 assists. Had 24 points, 9 rebounds, and 1 assist the other day. Ryan Larson, 6'1", senior, averages 10.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 11 assists a game. That's the most I've seen in the tournament. Jacob Prince, a 6'5", senior, had 9 points, 9 rebounds, and an assist yesterday. Averages 8.6 rebounds and 3 assists. That's the starting lineup for Jerry Klein Jr.'s Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. They have an enrollment of 1,145. They are 28-2 and two on the season. This is their 12th trip to the state tournament. They average 20 assists and 14 turnovers a game. The Eden Prairie Eagles, Tyler Kluge is a 6'1 senior, averages 9 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 7 assists. He had 8 points, 3 rebounds, and 6 assists yesterday. D.J. Johnson is a 5'8 senior, averages 4 points, 2 assists, had 2 points and 1 assist yesterday. Austin Andrews, a 6'5 sophomore, 18 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists, had 13, 6, and 1 yesterday. Connor Christensen is a 6'6 sophomore, 22 points, 11 rebounds, 2 assists yesterday. Averages 11, 6.5, and, and 2. And Drake Dobbs, a 6-foot sophomore, had 12 points, 3 rebounds, no assists yesterday. Averages 18 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. This is Eden Prairie's 11th trip to the state tournament. When we return, we'll have the... Opening tip of today's game between the Creighton Durham Hall and Eden Prairie. We'll do that right after this one minute timeout. I learned at an early age that teamwork is essential in our everyday lives. Hi, Brian Elwer, store director at Cashwise Foods Oatana. From my early days in youth sports, right up to playing varsity basketball for the Austin Packers, being part of the team, regardless if it's sports, work, or even everyday life, brings us a sense of accomplishment. 
The team at Cashwise Foods Oatana would like to congratulate all participating teams in this year's Boys State Basketball Tournament and wish them all the best of luck. Cashwise Foods is Oatana's low price leader. Water is the essential for all life. Water Systems Company Cannon Valley Water serves southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, and western Wisconsin with the best water. Your choice of Candy Ohio purified water or Chippewa 100% spring water. Hot and cold coolers also available. Salt delivery provided for businesses or homes. The hot tap is awesome for hot chocolate teas or soups. Phone toll free 888-452-0355. Dundas office is 645-8295. Awards by Taji and Kenyon can assist you in recognizing someone with plaques or trophies in a variety of styles and price ranges. Say thanks to a dedicated employee. Reward a son or daughter's accomplishments. Whatever the occasion, Taji, Jewelry, and Kenyon has the experience to assist in choosing the appropriate award. Teams throughout the area have used awards by Taji because they know the service is unmatched and the price is right. All right, let's swoop it up. Creighton Narum Hall and Eden Prairie. Starting lineup, service of Matt Murray Auction Company of Canyon. When you're starting up any kind of a sale, whether it's farm or real estate, there's no better auctioneer than Matt Murray. Matt Murray Auction Company, no better. No one does it better than Matt Murray Auction Company in Kenyon. Without a doubt, Minnesota's auction leader. When you're thinking about having a farm or real estate auction, start by contacting MarringAuction.com. This is Raiders across the white uniforms of the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. They had their purple on yesterday with gold. Today they're in the white with purple trim. Eden Perry wearing the dark uniforms just like they did yesterday. Even though Creighton Durham Hall is the number one seed. They're doing the Duke Hop, I always call it, when they're jumping up and down. Those Creek Durham Hall Raiders, the 6-10 O'Toole wins the tap, as you would can, you would think. And Creek Durham Hall has the ball right out of the gate. O'Toole on the floor. Here's a shot from eight. It's no good. Rebound yanked down. This Eden Prairie team can rebound well. Dobbs got the rebound. Dobbs has 98 threes on the season. Is out front with it is Kluge. He'll pass the top of the key to Andrews. Bounces at baseline. Shot is, def- or the pass, I should say, is deflected. Shot, by the way, was taken by Oturu on the other end, the 6'10 senior. Three sophomores start for Eden Prairie. They're going to be very good the next few years as Dobbs is out front with a basketball. He had 12 points, three rebounds yesterday. You get it back out front to Christensen. Who had a lights out game for Eden Prairie in the lane. Might have been a travel. Here's a three. That's no good. Rebound taken out by Oturu. Gonna head to the University of Minnesota, be a golden gopher. The 6'10 senior. And an offensive foul is called on Creek Narrow Hall's Ryan Larson. Larson gets called for the offensive foul, bringing the ball up. The defender was pretty tight to him, and he lowered the shoulder, and they called him for it. So Eden Prairie gets the ball back. No score. We're a little over almost a minute. Well, we're now a minute into the game. Dobbs dribbles to his right. Black headband on. He hands it off. Band to man defense here, but they got O'Toole who kind of planted the paint. Now he comes out to challenge you guys. Shots up. It's blocked. It was clearly a travel. It wasn't called. Coach Klein wasn't happy about that. I thought it was a travel too. Coming up in front of us, Creighton Durham Hall. Larson again continues to try and advance and now they call a foul on D.J. Johnson and he just walks off in disgust. Johnson is a defensive specialist for this Eden Prairie team. He doesn't score a lot but he puts pressure on the point guard and does a good job of it. O'Toole is going to set a screen try and help Larson. Larson passes in the left corner. They get it back to O'Toole. O'Toole takes a couple of dribbles in the paint. Stops, shoots, comes up very short. Ball's tapped out. There's a tie-up. And oh, we're going to have a, uh, a foul here, I think. Now well, they call the foul on Chapman. It'll be his first. Leighton Prairie has a couple of fouls on their first couple of possessions. 
Coach Klein gets very animated. <laughs> uh, he was up off the chair, the cushion chair, talking about the traveling in that last possession. As Christensen will hand it off to D.J. Johnson, bounces the top of the key to Andrews. A couple of left-handed dribbles, he'll hand it off to Dobbs. Dobbs passes it to Christensen. Otua does come out to challenge him, goes by him, reverse layup, good. I love the way these sophomores play, man. They are fearless. Two to nothing, Eden Prairie on the garlic's water conditioning, a terrible scoreboard. Bounce pass goes into Otuto on the block. Andrews is on him. Otuto spins to his right, shoots, and it rolls off iron. Rebounds taken down by Christensen. Head up, bringing it across the timeline. Eden Prairie gets it to Dobbs. It's Kluge. Now back to Dobbs. Gets a high screen, dribbles to his left, gets it to the screener. Andrews' shot is no good. Rebound. Well, he didn't snatch the ball. He was trying to grab it and look before he grabbed it, and so he ended up losing the ball, and now Eden Prairie got it back. Already a couple of turnovers by Creighton. There's a three, no good. Rebound underneath, taken down by the Raiders of Creighton Durham Hall. That was a man's rebound, too. He's out front with us. Is Ryan Larson. You can hear him dribbling. Dribbles to his left, stops at the free line, passes it to Cheatham, and Cheatham's shot's no good. And, well, they could have called a foul on the, over the back there, but Dobbs looked like he had boxed out the player. Already Creighton Aram Hall's made a substitution in the game. Jalen Newton is a 6'1 senior. He's the guy who got that man's rebound earlier. There's no substitute for the quality you find at Cash Wise Foods in Oatana. You can get more than just a sub at their deli. They have an awesome deli. Back in 30 seconds. Pine Island Lumber supports high school athletics because they understand what it takes to compete. They also appreciate the projects you may need to get completed around your home or farm. That's why the Full Service Lumberyard was established in the 1940s to serve the area, supplying everything you need to go from start to finish with a building project of any size. Pine Island stocks quality raw lumber, finished millwork, windows and doors. Check out the Trex decking available, the nation's largest manufacturer of wood alternative decking, railing, and fencing. Make Pine Island Lumber your lumber yard. Two to nothing is our score. We're a few minutes into the game. Both teams are Ding it up, and I'm sure they're pretty nervous, you know. On the boob tube and everything, so I'm sure they're very nervous. You get more. It's just hard to get a flow in these games because they have all the media timeouts. You can conserve your timeouts, and you don't have to go as deep on your bench because guys get more rest, but it's just hard to get a flow going because every couple minutes you got a media timeout. So Eden Prairie has a 2 nothing lead with 14.47 to go in the first half on the Garlic's Water Conditioning Affairable Scoreboard. Log on to garlicswater.com. Get a no-hassle, no-obligation quote or water analysis. Halftime, we'll have our Pine Island Lumber Halftime Report. Pass goes on the left wing to get it back top of the key to uh, Newton. Newton. Cheatman and he loses the ball and coming back up the other way and almost travel and ends up turning it over to Zeden Prairie. So it's been a long drought here for the Raiders. Pass comes out to Newton, top of the key. He'll get it to Oturu, he'll hand it off. Here's a triple and it's no good. Rebound, Newton goes back up, missed it. Boy, Newton's been a spark plug since he came on. Very early came on too. Foul's going to be on John Henry, the 6'4 sophomore who checked in for Eden Prairie off the bench. He and Coach Flum share a smile as Newton hits the first free throw. Newton 3 of 4 on the season at the free throw line. So obviously he hasn't played a ton. And he's playing in the state tournament here. I'm sure Mr. Klein has his reasons. Maybe it's defensively. Maybe he's got more quickness. Maybe he gets more steals. We're tied at two. 14 minutes to go first half. Handoff goes to Dobbs. Top of the key. He'll back up with the basketball. Gets a high screen from Andrews. Dribbles to his right. Andrews rolled the bucket. Now comes out to get the ball. Hands it off to Dobbs. As Cheatman tries to get to him. On the baseline. 
Here's a steal. Coming out of the pack, Creighton Darum Hall layup reverse is good. Ryan Larson gets the reverse layup, and they turn that into points in a heartbeat. Four to two, Creighton Darum Hall. Right to left in your radio dial. Go the Eden Prairie Eagles. Here's Andrews in the corner for three, and it's swish. Austin Andrews hits his 16th triple of the season. As Creighton Aram Hall will bring it up the floor. Jacob Prince is out front with a basketball. Swings it over to Larson. Corner they go with it to Chapman. Down top of the key, Newton hands it off to Oturu. Oturu. Back to Newton, out front to Prince. Holds up a couple of fingers, the uh, index finger and the pinky. Left side, they go with it to Newton. One dribble, back out top of the key. They're showing good patience here. Creek near him, Hall. Oturu has it at the free line. I'll hand it off to Larson. Larson, great pass underneath. What a terrific bounce pass. Let him right to the layup. Prince scores. That's right, Prince scores. And it's 6 5, Creek near him, Hall. Left side. Andrews dumps it off in the corner to Henry for three. It's no good. Rebound. Christensen high in the air to get that one in the lane. Henry scoops it off glass and scores. John Henry scores. And I think the butterflies are out of the tummies. It's 7-6 Eden Prairie on the Garlic's Water Conditioning of Faribault scoreboard. Get at halftime. Pine on the Lumber will bring you all our stats, which will be a service of H&R Block. Conclusion of our game, we'll select our Taji Jury of Kenyon player of the game. Here's a triple. It's no good by Newton. Rebound put back up and no good by Prince. He gets it again. Now he's in trouble. They tie him up as Prince goes hard to the floor because he wants that basketball. The possession arrow goes Eaton Prairie's way. Prince was not going to give up that ball. <laughs> it was like a Taji Jewelry diamond. Well, they do call it the Rock. It's 7-6, Eden Prairie. 11.56 to go first half. Going right down the lane and scooping it off glass is Kluge. He's got 36 threes on the year. As Larson has it out front. It's a high screen, doesn't use it. Left side of the hoop gets it into Oturu. Oturu is called for an offensive foul. As Andrews stands in to take the charge, Oturu gets his first foul, and that's turnover number four on Creighton already. <laughs> Coach Klein's going to get a substitute in here for Creighton. It is Omari Carter. He's a 6'5 sophomore. Prince will sit down. So Carter's in the game. Averages four points, two rebounds. He had two points, two rebounds the other day. Amari Carter has nine trays on the season. Bringing the ball up. Kluge dribbles to his right. Between the legs, passes it to Henry. He'll hand it off to Dobbs. Dobbs dribbles to his left. He's being guarded by Chapman. Andrews loses. Oturo goes right down the lane. Blocked! Oh, my, that was a nice rejection by Charlie Dennis, a six-foot senior. He's got long arms for a six-footer. Here's a triple, and it's good! Larson hits the three. He's got 15, and we're tied at nine with 10.55 to go to our Pine Island Lumber halftime report. Told you this would be a good game. Pass, nice chest pass over to Andrews. He dribbles to his right. He'll shoot the long three. It's no good. Rebound. Christensen again goes back up. Missed it. Rebound tipped up. Taken down by Henry. He'll pass it in the corner to Kluge. Dribbles between two Raiders. Bounces it underneath the basket. Got too far underneath. There's a three by Kluge, and it's good. Kluge hits the three. He's got 37 triples on the season, and it's 12-9 Eden Prairie. If you're wondering what the score was in that game when they played on the 28th, it was 65-63. Here's a steal. Kluge is in, coming out of the pack, going down the lane, dumps it off behind him, and there's a layup. A little no-look dump behind to Christensen, and he scores. And they are taking advantage of these turnovers by the Raiders. It's 14-9, Eden Prairie. Bringing the ball up is Larson. Creighton Durham Hall, the number one seed, the number one rated team in the state. Eden Prairie was ranked number nine in the final Minnesota basketball news poll. 
Has dribbled the left side. Shots up by Larson. No good. Rebound taken down by Andrews. The pass goes all the way down the floor. Under the glass. Shots in and he's fouled. Going to the free throw line is going to be Connor Christensen. He had the awesome 18 points in the first half yesterday. He's got four already this half. Prince is going to check back in for the Raiders of Creighton Durham Hall. There's no substitute for the great quality you get at Cash Wise Foods in Owatonna, your low price leader. And we all like to save money, don't we? So Christensen goes to the free throw line. Getting ready to take a couple of free throws, and he made it. Well, excuse me, one free throw because he was shooting. So Christensen makes the three-point play the old-fashioned way. And these teams, unlike other teams in this tournament, I've noticed a lot of teams have not shot free throws well in here. But these two teams are combined three for three. 17 to nine. Eden Prairie leads. Nine and a half minutes to go here in the first half on the Garlic's Water Conditioning Affordable Scoreboard. A water filtration system from Garlic's can help with problem water. Get the details at garlicswater.com back in 30 seconds. Take that Dairy 3 for Me pledge. Did you know that dairy products you've always loved are packed with nutrition? By participating in a Dairy 3 for Me pledge, you are committing to getting the three recommended servings of dairy by enjoying some of your favorite items like milk, cheese, and yogurt every day. Milk provides nine essential nutrients including calcium, potassium, phosphorus, protein, vitamins, A, B, B12, riboflavin, and niacin. Milk is affordable. An eight-ounce glass of milk is only about 25 cents. This message was brought to you by the Goodyear County ADA. Wow. I think the place is still getting fuller here at the Target Center. The lower bowl is pretty full. There's not much upstairs, but I tell you, come championship night, there'll be uh, this place will be packed. I don't know if it'll even matter who the matchup is because we've got a lot of good teams here, especially in Class 4A here in the Final Four. Wow. Eden Prairie, Creighton, Durham Hall, Lakeville North, and Apple Valley all... All, of course, right in the metro area, so the fans don't have to go very far. Creighton Durham Hall puts on some pressure here as Prince brings the ball up for the Raiders. Creighton Durham Hall, Eden Prairie putting on the pressure. Larson gets it at the Timberwolf logo, being guarded by Dobbs. Dobbs has the uh, black wraps on a couple of his fingers. He's like a catcher, only he usually has white tape on his fingers, so the pitcher can see the signs. Prince has it in the corner, lobs it on the block to Oturu. He's triple teamed. Oturu goes in the glass and scores. Well, that's what I was told that they were going to do. Eden Prairie to try and shut down Mr. Oturu, who had 24 points, 9 rebounds, and an assist yesterday. They were going to really bottle him up in the lane, but any really good player is going to find a way to get his points. Here's a three. It's no good by Henry. Oturu might have gotten away with a push off to get that rebound. He'll hand it off. Bringing the ball up is going to be Larson for Creighton Durham Hall. They're down by six, eight and a half minutes to go first half. Larson dribbles to his right. The two are with a screen there. Pass goes to Chapman. Inside the lane, spins, shoots it, and misses. Rebound taken out by Prince. He falls down as he's rebounding the ball. The ball rolls into the corner. It's picked up by Dobbs for Eden Perry. Now we've got a guy tripping over Prince. On one end of the floor. Pass goes all the way into the corner. Christensen for three. It's no good. Rebound yanked down by Oturu. He gets it to Larson. Prince is running ahead of him. He bounces it to his left. Oh, my gosh. Getting smacked right in the head by the elbow of uh, Chapman. And they're going to call Chapman with a second foul here. Might have been a little out of control. As he was coming down the lane, he... Dobbs at his head stopped the elbow. He got smacked with an elbow right in the eye. And it looks like he's going to be okay. The official's checking with him, and he says, Man, oh, man, I'm glad I'm wearing this headband. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he's saying, but 17 11 is our score on the Garlic's Water Conditioning, a fairable scoreboard. Or Scooby County ADA reminds us to get our free every day of dairy. Take the Dairy 3 for Me pledge. Three servings of milk, cheese, or yogurt to add to your diet. Power your day with protein. We got another offensive foul. 
going to be on Kluge. So Kluge gets called for his first foul, 17-11. Officials are trying to get this thing under control. It's very, very physical. They don't want it to get too wild. Larson looks to bring the ball up against a trap here by Eden Prairie. Larson trying to dribble through the trap, and they're going to call a foul on Dobbs. I don't think Dobbs necessarily agreed with the call. So Drake Dobbs, the six-foot sophomore, gets called for the foul. We've had a few of those. Four on Eden Prairie and five so far on Creighton Durham Hall. Larson dribbles to his left. With a right-handed dribble, Prince with a moving screen. Pass goes in the corner. Here's an 18-footer, and it's good. Hitting the shot is Amari Carter. This looks like a nice under-control type player at 17-13. Eden Perry. Andrews gets it on the left side to Dobbs. Dobbs is being guarded out there by Newton. Dobbs fakes left, goes right. Now between the legs, now to his right, now to his left. Pass in the corner. Andrews goes baseline, fakes the shot, a uh, pass. Shot's blocked by Oturu. He gets the ball, or it was a pass maybe, but he blocked it. Larson goes down the lane and gets hammered. He was going in for a layup. He was bound and determined to take it to the rack. And let's see if they call the foul. I think they call it on Christensen. Nope, they didn't. Foul's going to be on. Oh, it's going to be on John Henry. So Larson's at the free throw line, where he is 49 of 71 on the season, at six points. Johnson comes back in for Eden Prairie, and sitting down is going to be Day. As Larson hit the free throws. And we've got another one of those media timeouts. Six minutes, 51 seconds to go in the first half. Eden Prairie looked like they might run away with this one. Well, Creek Narrow Mahal has come back. It's 17-15, the kind of game we really did expect. Of course, at halftime, during our Pine Island Lumber halftime report, they have quality materials, superb service at Pine Island Lumber. They want to be your lumber yard. We'll look at those. H&R Block stats. Boy, do they know their numbers at H&R Block. They know taxes. What am I saying? Don't just get your taxes done. Get your taxes won. Get your maximum refund guaranteed at H&R Block. I was just going to say, both teams brought in some subs there, and Cash Rise Foods in Oatana is the home of Taste of Easter Friday and Saturday. Your low price leader is Cash Wise in Oatana. It's worth a little bit of a drive to save some bucks. Yeah, pretty good contention of student body from both these schools. Not anywhere near what the school is in terms of enrollment. Creighton Durham Hall's enrollments, 1,145. Eden Prairie's is 2,804, which is, uh, well, to put that in perspective, that's, that's bigger than Carleton College. Creek <laughs> is almost a Carlton. <laughs> They're showing some pictures up on the board of some fans that are going crazy here. Kluge hands it off to Dobbs. They really have some incredible spacing on the floor here, does Eden Perry. Johnson pass on the left side. Andrews looks to dribble penetrate on Oturu. Oturu moving his feet well. The shot off last. Beautiful by Andrews. He did that over the big man who's going to be a golden gopher. Seven points for Andrews already, and Oturu has just two. It's 19-15 Eden Prairie. Pass goes out top of the key. Is back in the game for Creighton Durham Hall is Jaden King. He's a 6'5 junior. He's a shot. They say it's good, and there's a foul as Oturu hits the shot. Foul's going to be on Andrews. Oturu took it from the right corner. That's his second foul. I tell you what, if Eden Perry gets in foul trouble, they do not go deep. Neither does Creighton Durham Hall, as far as that goes. Both teams played everybody yesterday because they had blowouts, but that's not normally the case. 
So Atua has a chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way, and he made the free throw. Love big guys who make their free throws. Coming into this game, though, he's only about 68%. 19-18, Eden Prairie. The garlic's water conditioning of Thurlbow scoreboard. Dobbs looks to dribble penetrate. It's a back out front to Kluge. Man-to-man defense here by Creighton Durham Hall. He looks, looks, pass in the corner to Andrews. Andrews takes a couple of left-handed dribbles, gets inside the paint, steps one way to the other, gets in the corner. Johnson's three is no good. It hit twice off the backboard. Nobody knew that. So Christensen ends up with it. I mean, the timing was all off on that rebound. There's a long three by Kruge. It's no good. Rebound's taken out by Larson. Actually taken out by his teammate. Larson almost stole it from him. His teammate, uh, the teammate of King, who had just one rebound in the game yesterday, and he looks to be fine here. Didn't get to play a lot of minutes. Turned an ankle, I think. Here's a three, and it's good! Putting up three fingers on the right hand is Jalen Newton. Just his fourth three of the season. And Creighton near him all has taken the lead. 21-19 with five minutes to go in the first half. Andrews dribbles down the lane, spins. Uh, he might have walked. <laughs> they're, they're going to give a foul on the Creek Durham Hall. I think he spun before he stepped. Otulu gets called for his second foul. So whoever has the fewest fouls might be winning this game. So at the free throw line is Austin Andrews, and his free throw is a switch. They don't have the percentages. Eaton Prairie just has how many points they made at the free throw line. That was his 122nd of the season. As the Raiders are going to bring in a substitute here. They did not play a lot of minutes yesterday for Creighton Durham Hall. That is Charlie Dennis, the six-foot senior. He did play, but not a lot of major minutes. And he missed the second one. Rebounds taken down by Christensen. You get it back out front. That's the first miss by either team. And we have a foul call here on Creek near them all. It's going to be on the young man, Dennis, who just came in the game. He was a little upset by the call. He's trying to get possession. He kind of pulled a chair out from under the, the player. And, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a foul when you pull the chair out from under him here's the free throw it's no good Andrews is one for three Creighton gets the rebound they're up by one now the ball stolen away they head to Dobbs bounces it under the basket nice pass and going in for a little lay in looked like he was going to stuff it is Andrews. House would have come down had he had stuffed at 22 21. Eden Prairie's got the lead again. It's another thing I love about these sophomores. They do not panic, they just play. A couple of right handed dribbles in the lane going right to the basket, missing the shot. Lots of contact, no foul. Throw ahead to Johnson. Johnson top of the key, bounce to the right side, going in, scooping it off glass is Kluge. Kluge scores on the layup. He's got seven, and it's 24 21 Eden Prairie. They're going up and down. As with the basketball is Larson. Dribbles to his right, guarded by Johnson. Goes right by Johnson and scoops it off glass and scores. Larson scores. He's got nine, averages ten, and it's 24-23. Eden Prairie in a seesaw first half with a couple of good teams going toe-to-toe. Kluge, front of the Creek and Durham Hall bench. Guys are moving, trying to get open here for Eden Prairie. Pass comes out front to Dobbs. Swings it on the right side. Coach Klein is telling his team to come over. D.J. Johnson almost lost the ball to bounce. Gets it back for Eden Prairie. 3.22 to go. They're up by one point. Coach Flum stands with hands crossed, looking very dapper with his red tie. Coach Klein is uh, constantly on the move. Ball gets knocked away, and it's stolen by Larson. Eden Prairie turns it over. Larson. In the open floor, goes down the lane to Prince. Prince under the basket too far, missed the shot, and they have a foul underneath the basket. It's going to be on Christensen. Connor Christensen, the 6'6 sophomore, who has five points. 
Averages 11 points, 12 uh, or 6.5 rebounds. He had 18 in the first half yesterday. That was lights out good. He had four threes in the first half. Prince is at the free throw line and scores. Jacob Prince, he's a 6'5 senior, had nine points and nine rebounds yesterday. Averages eight points and six rebounds. You can say Prince has hit the weights a little bit. As Henry comes back in, D.J. Johnson sits down. There's no substitute for the great food they've got in the deli at Cashwater. Prince hits both free throws, and Creek Narum Hall is 7-for-7 seven seven from the free throw line. That's right, they have seven points at the free throw line, two for Eden Prairie, and that's why the Raiders have a one-point lead. 25-24 as the brain trust for Eden Prairie is deciding what they want to do. Likewise, the, well, actually, Coach Klein is over there talking to the official. I don't think he was really happy with that foul call when uh, when his player kind of pulled the chair out from under the def- the offensive player. It's where, you know, you're bodying the guy up. You get, he's trying to get down on the block in the post, and you just uh, release pressure from the back side. And he fell down, and Coach Klein's like, I don't know how that's a foul because you're back, you're, you're relieving pressure on the guy. You're not trying. You're not trying to hit him or bother him at all. In terms of a foul, that's what Coach Klein is saying. Yep, boy, I sure would like some of those chicken, some of the chicken, or even a some pizza too. They cater. Did you know that they cater at Cash Wise Foods? You know, Tata. I don't know that they'll cater all the way up here though. It'd be nice if they did. They've got really good food at the deli, Cash Rice, Oatana. I don't know if I told you yet, but it really got really good food, Cash Rice, Oatana. Brody Kosfeld here at the KDHL Sports Microphone. Roy Koenig will be joining me courtside here at the Target Center after two great days at Williams Arena. Got to have a younger guy go up all them steps. <laughs> I did it for many, many years. We had Mike Morrissey here, and I was over at Williams. It's 25-24. Not that I mind the barn. I think it's a great venue, and it's beautiful viewpoint, better viewpoint than here. We're courtside, but I, I'd really like the elevated view in terms of seeing everything unfold on the floor. Christensen in the lane goes up, and he got fouled. So we're going to have a foul fest here, folks. Very physical game. Foul is called on Jacob Prince, his first. So Christensen's at the free throw line, and he missed it. Their last three free throws have been missed. They're two for five is Eden Prairie. They're down by one. If he makes this, we get a tie game. Christensen's got six, well, five points, looking for his sixth. He had 18 in the first half yesterday. He missed them both badly. A rebound goes out of bounds, belongs to Eden Prairie. Coach Flum clamping his hands, encouraging his team. Coach Klein walks to the end of the floor in front of his bench. Fake bounce pass, and then uh, Andrew throws a way out top to Dobbs. Touch pass in the corner. They get it to Christensen for three. It's no good. Rebound yanked down. And I mean yanked down by Charlie Dennis. So looking to bring the ball up is Ryan Larson. His team's up by one with 2.22 to go in the half. Coach Klein wants this to be a little more of a controlled game. Larson drills the three line, stops, shoots, and scores. Ryan Larson having a nice first half. He's got 11, and it's 27-24. Here's a steal. Ball got knocked away. Larson in the open floor, dribbles all the way in front of Coach Flum. Now they get it back out top of the key from King back to Larson. Coach Klein hollering out a play. I don't know how his players can hear him all the way down the court like that. Dribbling to his right, Larson in the lane, dumps it off to Prince, goes under the basket, shoots it, missed it, rebound, nobody yet. Puts it back up and we have another foul call. As Mr. Christensen is telling his teammates, we've got a rebound. I can read his lips. Prince's free throw is no good. 
That's the first miss by Creighton Aram Hall in this game. First miss. Try and get those shooting percentages for you here if I can. There's Prince makes the second one. They have eight points at the free throw line, two for Eaton Prairie. That's the difference. They're up by four, 28-24. Creighton Durham Hall, the number one ranked team in the state, according to Minnesota Basketball News in Class 4A. Dobbs going to shoot an NBA three. Comes up a little short. Rebound tipped around, taken down by King. He'll leave it for Larson. We'll bring it up. Ryan Larson. Having a really nice first half of the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. Prince is setting the screen for him. He's going to stop, pop a three, and it's bottom of that. Larson hits his second three of this game. His 16th of the season, and it's 31-24. Biggest lead of the game for Creighton Durham Hall. Andrews in the lane, scores, and they call a travel. <laughs> That was a, uh, well, he's very animated, Mr. Klein Jr., the <laughs> coach of Creighton Durham Hall. Thirty-one twenty-four. we're under a minute to go in the first half. Eden Prairie, oh, by the way, Cass Lake beat Rushford Peterson by just two points, so it was quite a comeback by the Trojans, but they fell the number three seed. Cass Lake Bino, also the number three ranked team in the state, if I remember right, Class A. King passes it to Larson. Running through the lane is Newton. Backing up with it is Larson. Swings it over to Prince. They're going for the last shot. 25 seconds to go. They can't have anything less than a seven-point lead if they don't turn it over. King's dribbling out front. Larson calling for the ball. Johnson in between the two guys. Dribbling right in front of us is Larson. He'll dribble out to the left. Andrews picks him up with nine seconds. Pass goes to Prince. The free throw line to six seconds. Goes over the shot. It's blocked. Coming up the other way is Dobbs. Throws it ahead. Layup is no good. And there's a foul. Boy, they got down the court in a hurry. There's eight-tenths of a second left in the half. And Connor Christensen will be shooting free throws. Prince thought he was fouled as he went in for that shot. I did think it was a clean block. We're going to have a foul called on uh, Creighton Durham Hall's Dennis, his second. And there wasn't much doubt of that one, I don't think. So Christensen, who's one for three, missed another one. And that's the end of the first half. Or, I'm sorry, he gets another free throw. He was shooting, but... Uh, have to find himself at the free throw line here. And they did not provide free throw shooting statistics. Just 29 points scored on the year. For Christensen at the free throw line. And he makes that one. And that will be the end of the first half. The score 31-25. Creighton Durham Hall leading. In Creighton Durham Hall, the number one ranked team in the final Minnesota basketball news. Class 4A poll, number one seed in this tournament. Eden Prairie, the number four seed, the number nine ranked team in the state. Even though they are one of only two teams to beat this Creighton Aram Hall team this season. That's right. Creighton Aram Hall lost to Eden Prairie on February 28th. Back in December, they lost to the Edina Hornets. Of course, Eden Prairie comes into this game with seven losses on the season. Again, your halftime score coming up next. It'll be the Pine Island Lumber Halftime Report. Creek Narrow Hall, 31, Eden Prairie, 25, back in one minute. All right, America, H&R Block has some good news. For a limited time only, you could get a refund advance loan of up to $3,000 the same day you file at Block. That's right, you could get up to $3,000 today, no interest. Told you it was good news. To learn more or find participating locations near you, visit hrblock.com. Get your taxes, one. Optional tax refund-related loan from B of I Federal Bank. Not your tax refund. 500 750 1250 or $3,000 loans offered. Approval of loan amount based on expected refund and other conditions. Funds loaded on prepaid card. Tax returns may be e-filed without applying for this loan. Fees for other products or features may apply. Another money-saving secret from Arm & Hammer. My name is Malena. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I love Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Plus Scent Laundry Detergent. It cleans really well. It doesn't irritate my skin, and it smells wonderful. Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Plus Scent has a skin-friendly scent people love, so it's preferred 2 to 1 over the leading free and clear detergent, and it costs up to 30% less. 
We've been on a very tight budget lately, so it's a no-brainer. The clean you need at a fraction of the cost. Time now. For the Pine Island Lumber Halftime Report, when it's time to complete any building project, you want quality materials, of course, the place to go is Pine Island Lumber. I was just trying to get our live stats up. So i got to refresh this again. I've refreshed it about four times here. And here we go. Shooting percentages in the first half. Our stats, all the service of H&R Block. At H&R Block, you get your maximum refund guaranteed. H&R Block, man, do they know their numbers. They know taxes. At H&R Block, offices in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana. Greeting there, them all is shooting 48% from the field. Eden Prairie, 40%. From Freeland, Eden Prairie is 2 of 10. And Creighton there, them all is 3 of 6. Free throw line is the difference here in the first half. Creighton Aram Hall is 8 of 9 from the free throw line, and Eden Prairie is 3 of 8. That's not very good, 3 of 8. 8 of 9 is also, was well, very good. Turnovers, 10 for Creighton Aram Hall, 7 for Eden Prairie. It's been a fast-paced game. You heard me right, 10 for Creighton Aram Hall, 10 turnovers. Ten turnovers, and they have a six-point lead. That's almost unheard of. Of course, that's a 20% shooting by Aiden Prairie from three-point range, and three of eight from the free throw line. That's why. Rebounds. Creighton Aram Hall's really getting after it on the glass. When we saw Eden Prairie yesterday, we thought, wow, can this team rebound? And I'm sure Creighton thought the exact same thing, so they obviously are concentrating on that. And remember, I told you what Mr. Christensen told his teammates, we've got a rebound. As they were standing at the free throw line, he turned to his teammates and said, we've got a rebound. And he's right. Because they've been out-rebounded 17-12. to Seven offensive rebounds for the Eagles and six for Creighton Durham Hall. The largest lead for Eden Prairie with nine minutes and 33 seconds to go in the first half was eight points. So Creighton Durham Hall had their largest lead of seven points. They lead by six now. With a minute, ele- a minute 11 to go in the first half. Yep, a minute 11 to go in the first half. They knew that Pine Island Lumber was just around the corner with their halftime report. And they really punched it up to another gear to Crete Durham Hall. And they lead by six here at halftime. 31-25. By the way, our officials today are Brent Svor, Kevin Anderson, and Scott Malugi. Hope I pronounced that right. Total fouls, eight called on Eaton Prairie, nine called on Creighton Durham Hall. We have three guys with two fouls each for Creighton Durham Hall. Side Chapman's got two. Daniel Oturu's got two. And Charlie Dennis has two. So we'll see if Eaton Prairie's game plan includes trying to get those guys in foul trouble. So like I said, both these teams really don't go super deep. Eaton Prairie... Just a couple of guys with two fouls, Connor Christensen and John Henry. You're listening to the Pine Island Halftime Report, Pine Island Lumber Halftime Report. Service of Pine Island Lumber. They want to be your lumber yard. The score, Creighton Durham Hall 31, Eden Prairie 25. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Hi, this is Chris from Garlic's Water. Are you fed up with fighting rust stains and hard water problems at home? We have a system that can solve all your headaches a Connecticut water system. We have a wide range of Connecticut water systems to fix any problem, big or small. Give me a call at 800-722-1282 or go online at garlicswater.com and let me show you what I can do to help. At Garlic's Water, your water has never been treated so well. Garlic's Water. The Gusty Basketball and Leadership Camp is designed to help each player from a high they skill to beginners. This camp is for all age groups, boys and girls. The ultimate goal of the camp is to develop well-rounded basketball players emphasizing discipline, poor presence, and team concepts. Each player will receive individual attention designed to help correct and improve areas of weakness and inexperience. Resident and day camperships are available. While this camp teaches fundamentals of basketball, kids also receive quality time used to discuss leadership, motivation, and positive living. Online registration is preferred at 
GustyBasketballCamp.com. Enrollment limited, filling fast. So go to GustyBasketball.com and register. Mehring Auction Company in Kenya is Minnesota's auction leader, specializing in agricultural auctions for farmland and machinery, residential real estate, antiques, and vintage collector items. Mehring Auction Company was founded in 1980 and conducts auctions all over the upper Midwest. Nobody does it better. I mean nobody. Mehring Auction brings their three decades plus of experience, knowledge, and market history to every auction they do. For more information or to check the auction calendar anytime, go to MehringAuction.com. 31-25 is our halftime score on KDHLAM Faribault, Minnesota. Our 30, my 30th year here, our 70th year of baseline-to-baseline coverage, the Boys State High School Basketball Tournament. Greet and Darum Hall Raiders, the number one ranked team in the state, leading the number nine rated Eden Prairie Eagles by a six-point margin. And again, earlier this year, Eden Prairie did beat Greet and Darum Hall. They only have two losses to the Raiders. They lost to Edina 75-61 on the 7th of December, and they lost to these Eaton Prairie Eagles on the 28th of February, 65-63. And I'm trying to see here. Yep, that's the only game they played against each other. Creighton Durham Hall and Eden Prairie. Take a look at some individual stats here. Ryan Larson leads Creighton Aram Hall with 14 points and three assists. He played every ticky tock of the clock in the first half. And in terrific balance with Jalen Newton, Jacob Prince, and Daniel Oturu with five points each. Two points off the bench for Amari Carter. Just four assists were credited to Creighton Aram Hall. They had 17 rebounds, six on the offensive glass, led by Oturu with five. Prince has four. Three for Jaden King. Two for Jalen Newton, one for Ryan Larson, and one for Charlie Dennis. Reed and Prairie, they are led by Austin Andrews with ten points here at the half. He played every ticky-tack of the clock. Four of the five starters played every single second of the first half for Eden Prairie. See what I mean about not going real deep. They had three rebounds, did Andrews. Connor Christensen has 6.6 rebounds in 18 minutes. Drake Dobbs did not score and only had one rebound and one assist in 18 minutes. Kyler Kluge had seven points, no rebounds, and three assists. He played every ticky-tock of the clock. D.J. Johnson played eight minutes and has one assist. And John Henry off the bench played ten minutes, has two points, one rebound here at halftime. Creighton Durham Hall leading it by a score of 31 25. We'll have more during our Pine Island Lumberyard halftime report. Pine Island Lumber wants to be your lumberyard back in 90 seconds. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a little boy with a towel. Now it's $5.99 at JCPenney. Wait, is that my good towel? There's more. I should go back to JCPenney. I would. Hurry into JCPenney for up to 50% off home, like $5.99 towels. Plus, take an extra $10 off your $25 purchase with coupon. And earn $10 bonus rewards for each $50 or more purchase. JCPenney. Style and value for all. Offers represent savings on regular or original prices. Earn up to three per rewards member. Earn bonus rewards 322 to 325 and redeem 326 to 45. Some exclusions apply. See store jcp.com for details. I learned at an early age that teamwork is essential in our everyday lives. Hi, Brian Elwer, store director at Cashwise Foods Oatana. From my early days in youth sports, right up to playing varsity basketball for the Austin Packers, being part of the team, regardless if it's sports, work, or even everyday life, brings us a sense of accomplishment. The team at Cashwise Foods Oatana would like to congratulate all participating teams in this year's Boys State Basketball Tournament and wish them all the best of luck. Cashwise Foods is Oatana's low price leader. Water is the essential for all life. Water Systems Company, Cannon Valley Water, serves southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, and western Wisconsin with the best water. Your choice of Candy High purified water or Chippewa 100% spring water. Hot and cold coolers also available. Salt delivery provided for businesses or homes. The hot tap is awesome for hot chocolate teas or soups. Phone toll free 888-452-0355. Dundas office is 645-8295.
It's halftime. The Pine Island Lumber Halftime Report rolls along with the score Creighton Durham Hall 31 and Edenbury 25. Up next, and we'll have that game too. And then tomorrow, we'll have every one of the semifinal games in Class 2A and Single A here from the Target Center. Roy Kenny will be coming over to join yours truly. And on Saturday, we'll have all of the state championship games right here on the Mighty 920. If Lakeville North ends up playing for third place, we'll have that on Power 96 Radio on Saturday. As the Panthers play Apple Valley next. An all-South Suburban semifinal. Boy, that should be quite a game. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Trey Jones and Tyler Wall going at it. They split during the regular season. I was told by one of the Apple Valley fans that Apple Valley won in Lakeville, and Lakeville won at Apple Valley. So now they get the neutral floor in the semifinals of the state tournament. I know which place I'd rather win. (laughs) Uh, So you can hear the buzz of the fans here. They've seen some very physical play in the first half, and it really appeared to me like the officials were trying to kind of rein some of that physicality in with some of the calls they've made. Eaton Prairie has a couple of guys with two fouls, and Creighton Durham Hall has three guys with two fouls. One of those guys is a guy who comes off the bench. Well, it's ten turnovers are interesting, though, for Creighton Durham Hall. That obviously tells me that Eden Prairie did not score many points off turnovers. Normally, I keep that stat myself, and I probably should still do it up here. But let's see what the official scorer had for points off turnovers. I can find it here. There it is. 9-7, Creighton Durham Hall points off turnovers. Isn't that hard to believe? 9-7, Creighton Durham Hall had more points off Eden Prairie's turnovers. That's just very interesting. In seven turnovers for Eden Prairie and ten turnovers for Creighton Durham Hall, both teams came on the floor at nearly the exact same time with our score 31-25. Creighton Durham Hall on top here at halftime. In that points off turnovers is 9-7 points in the paint, by the way. Uh, I guess they don't have that on here. Isn't that interesting? Second chance points are 5-3 in favor of Eden Prairie. Bench points are dead even at two apiece. Eden Prairie did not score a field goal in the final four minutes and ten seconds of the first half, and Creighton Durham Hall did not score a field goal in the first in the in the last a minute eleven of the first half. And we'll see if switching ends helps the free throws for Eden Prairie because they were woeful in the first half. Eden Prairie, are we going left to right? Creighton Durham Hall, right to left on your radio dial. I'm sort of on the Eden Prairie end of the floor. Well, not sort of. I am on the Eden Prairie end of the floor. Not too far from the timeline, but boy, as close as we are to midcourt, it seems to be a long ways on the other end of the floor here at the Target Center in downtown Minneapolis. Scotty Cosfeld here at his engineering back of the studios. Hope you're enjoying our coverage. Our 70th year of baseline to baseline coverage, the Boys State High School basketball tournament. And a lot of nice comments up here as we traditionally do. From fellow broadcasters, too, who tune in on their way to the game and say they enjoy being able to get caught up on what's happening. The best way to listen again, folks, is to download the absolutely free KDHL app, and you can listen in Florida, you can listen in Europe, you can listen on the North Pole if you want to. Just tap the app, click on Listen Live, and you'll be right next to me. The Raiders will get the ball to start the second half. They've got the six-point lead. As inbounding it for Creighton Durham Hall is going to be Jalen Newton, the 6'1 senior. Also on the floor, along with Ryan Larson. Cy Chapman, who has not scored in this game, and he averages 20 a game. A great job on him. Of course, he got two fouls kind of early and had to sit. So Larson, as Creighton Durham Hall really spaces the floor here, has the ball knocked away. And then he tries to steal it back. Dobbs picks it up. 
Scoops it behind him to Prince, intercepts it. Larson dumps it off to Oturu with a flush. Oturu slams it home with a two hand slam. I had a hard time keeping track of uh, how many turnovers there were in that particular possession. <laughs> 20, 33, 25. Andrews is in the middle of paint. He better hurry. You'll see there could be a three-second call. Coach Klein thought there should be. Kluge passes it on the left side to Dobbs. Coach Flum looks concerned with hands on his hips in front of the Eden Prairie bench. He'll pass the left side to Andrews. Andrews tells his man Christensen to come baseline and hands it off to Kluge. Back to Christensen. Christensen dribbles to his right. He'll hand it off to Kluge. They get it in on the block to Andrews. Turns to face the basket with O'Toole on him. Goes inside the lane. He gets double teamed. Inside to Johnson. Nice scoop pass. Christensen goes up and scores. I'm sorry, Andrews does. Andrews scores. So Andrews scores. He needs to go a little quicker to the basket. You know, he's so worried about getting the shot blocked by O'Toole, and I would be too. O'Toole with a nice pass from Chapman scores. Just a little kiss off window off a high post pass to him post entry pass and it's 35 27 Dobbs in the left corner Andrews drives left baseline goes all the way through fakes the pass gets it back on the other side Dobbs gets it out front to Johnson almost stolen away running him over is Larson so Larson gets his second foul and inbounding it to our left will be Kluge at eight points, three rebounds, and six assists the other day. He's had seven points in the first half of this one. Kluge swings it on the left side to Christensen. Eden Prairie's got a long time. 35-27. They went a long time at the end of the first half without scoring. Here's a three by Dobbs. It's rimmed out. Rebound taken out by Oturu. Oturu will hand it off. Larson will bring the ball up with D.J. Johnson on him. Coach Klein, I don't think, ever sits down. Coach Flum did momentarily, and he's now on his feet. Is dribbling to his left is Larson. Larson at the free throw line shoots and scores. He even got bumped and he made it. Larson's got 16 points. He averages 10 a game. It's 37 27, biggest lead of the game. And Coach Flum might need a timeout. Pass goes out top of the key. Andrews fakes the three, goes in the lane as it tapped away. They'll get it back. No, he won't. Larson gets it. Another turnover. For Eden Prairie, pass in the corner to Prince, back out to Larson beyond the NBA line. He'll back up with it. We're at the Target Center, downtown Minneapolis. They have to put the high school line in here for these games. So I'm taking it off after the girls' basketball tournament because there's NBA games coming in here. I guess the NBA doesn't like that. Pass goes on the block to Oturu. Oturu faces basket now, scoops it off glass. Nice job by Oturu. Stayed under control. He's got 11. And they've jumped up to a 12-point lead, 39-27, with 14-39 to go in the game. Backing up with the basketballs, Drake Dobbs goes to that Timberwolf logo, comes over to our side of the floor. Being checked checked there by Chapman, who's got a 6-8 frame. Shots blocked by Oturu as Andrews, boy, he pushed him out of bounds, no foul. Wow. That was interesting. I mean, I thought it was a push. It was just to my right. I'm going to show a replay here. Well, they showed a replay of the dunk by Oturu. So with 14 minutes and 24 seconds to go on the Garlic's Water Conditioning of Faribault scoreboard, it's Creighton Durham Hall 39 and Eden Prairie 27. Yep, a water filtration system from Garlic can help with your problem, Water. Get the details at garlicswater.com. So we want to thank H&R Block for bringing you every stat we provide during our broadcast. H&R Block, they know their numbers. Offices in Lakeville, Faribault, Otana. No computer program can possibly come up with every single tax question. Think about it. All of us have different, I mean, every tax form is different for all of us. We all have individual, we did different lives, you know what I'm saying? So there's no possible way. It's just absolutely impossible for any computer program to know every single question to ask you about on your taxes. Whereas a personal tax preparer will ask you all kinds of questions. They'll be familiar with you. They'll be familiar with your life. They'll be familiar with 
what you might need to have for, you know, tax write-off so you get the maximum refund guaranteed at H&R Block. So, all good teams make runs. Eden Prairie's a good team. When will they make their run? Creighton Aram Hall leads at 39-27, 14-20 to go. Prince, as they put on some token pressure, but nothing major. Prince has it out front for the Creighton Aram Hall Raiders. Dribbling toward their bench. Pass comes out front to Larson. He throws it on the left wing. They get it on the block. Shots up right smack dab in the middle of paint. Missing is Chapman. He's not scored yet. He averages over 20. And they're still up by 12. Man, that speaks volumes, doesn't it? How good this Raider team is. Pass goes in the left corner to Andrews. The sophomore takes a couple of dribbles. The free throw line gets it out front to Kluge. He'll hand it off to Dobbs. Dobbs looks to dribble penetrate. He'll pass it on the left side. Kluge quickly gets in the corner to Andrews. Looking to operate on Oturu. Gets in the lane. Will bounce it in the right corner to Christensen. Christensen guarded by Prince. Gets it to Andrews. Tries to get by Oturu. Gets in the corner to Kluge. He steps back for three. And it's no good. Rebound tip taken down by Oturu. Oturu gets the rebound. For Creighton near them all. Oturu now has seven of those. To go with his 11 points. Larson brings the ball up, up by 12 with 13.15 to go. Oturu's at the free throw line. He'll stop, shoot, eight-footer no good. Rebound taken out by Dobbs. Dobbs throws it all the way down the floor to Christensen. He's going to do a transition three. It's no good. Rebound tapped to himself or tried to Andrews. He's sandwiched between two Raiders. One of them ends up out of bounds. And the ball's going to go to Eden Prairie, I think. And now the official's telling the Eden Prairie bench players to sit down. We don't want you standing up and cheering on your team. <laughs> we want you to sit down. So Dobbs gets the inbounds pass. Meanwhile, the Raiders on the other end are standing up. A couple of right-handed dribbles. Pass comes out front. Here's a three. In and out, no good. Man, it was part way down and just popped out, taken by Day. Or I should say Henry, John Henry, as Prince. Henry's had a rough day today, is what I meant to say. He's got one basket. 39-27. Creighton near him Hall, and it won't be long now, and Coach Klein will let the air out of the ball. Yep, it might be right now. 12-24 to go. It might be a little early for that. Well, you can take a little time off each possession, right? And now Coach Klein's going to take a timeout. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to let some air out of the ball. Not a complete stall, I don't think, but let some air out of the ball each possession. That's only smart. 39-27. Creek Nearham Hall leads at shooting percentages now. Our stats of service at h and Block with offices in Faribault, Oatown, and Lakeville. They know taxes at h and Block. We'll see if either of these teams bring in any more subs. They, they, neither one of them sub a lot. There's no subs too for quality to find at Cash Wise Foods in Oatown. Where you can get more than just a sub at the deli. Oh, man, they have a good deli at Cash Wise Foods. Your low price leader. 52% shooting by Creighton, 35% for Eden Prairie. Three point land, Eden Prairie is 2 of 14. I don't think I'd shoot anymore. They're 3 of 8 from the free throw line. They have not shot a free throw this half. 21 to 15 on the glass in favor of Creighton Aram Hall. Turnovers are 11 9 now. Creighton Aram Hall with 11. Their largest lead 12. Eden Prairie had an 8 point lead in the first half. They're down by 12. As Larson's dribbling around Oturu. Get in the corner to Prince. Prince will pass it to, to Chapman. The free throw line shot's good. Gets his first field goal of this game. Side Chapman scores. And he averages 20 and a half. It's 41-27. They haven't needed him. Isn't that amazing? Dobbs is passing it out front to Kluge. Swings on the left side to Andrews. Takes one dribble. Hands it off to Henry. Now they get it to Dobbs. Andrews gets it in the middle of the lane. Passes it to a moving uh, target. In I love that play. I think Eden Perry should run it more often. They, uh, Henry gets the score. He's got four points. Prince misses a shot. Rebound Kluge. Is this where Eden Curry makes a run? Pass goes to Christensen. Back to Kluge. Back to Christensen. He's going to shoot a three, and it's good! 
Christensen hits the three. His 48th of the season, and it's 41-32, back to a single-digit game. Coach Flum clapping his hands, telling his team to get on some pressure. And we're going to have an offensive foul. The offensive foul is called on Jaden King. So we've got a timeout here with 11 minutes exactly to go in the game. It's Creighton Durham Hall 41, Eden Prairie 32. Up next, it'll be an all link, uh, an all South Suburban Conference. I'm thinking way back in the old days when it was the lake. <laughs> South Suburban Conference. Semi-final with Apple Valley taking on Lakeville North. That should be a good one. Tomorrow we've got class... A and double A semifinals. If you missed it earlier today, I'm going to grab my book here. Northwoods absolutely walloped Heritage Christian. They will be playing Cass Lake Bina. Cass Lake always gets up and down the floor. Mayor Lutheran will play Russell Tyler Ruthton in the other semifinal. Those are at noon and two. And then tomorrow night it will be Class AA semifinals. Mini Haha Academy. St. Cloud Cathedral at 6. Brooklyn Center, Caledonia at 8. All those games right here on KDHL Radio. Roy and I will be splitting the duties tomorrow. Here at Target Center. It's 41-32. Great Narrow Hall. They've led most of this game. Indian Prairie did have an eight-point lead. It looked like they might pull away, but green has got some size on the floor. Chapman in particular, 6'8 senior guard. Shots up no good by Dobbs. As Eden Prairie looks like they were poised to make a run. They get it to single digits. Let's see what happens here. Larson backs up on the ball. Dobbs is getting right on him. Larson gets by him, goes in the lane, shoots the shot, missed it. Rebound taken down. Well, Oturu is tied up with Christensen. Possession arrow goes to Eden Prairie. So it'll be Eden Prairie's ball. See if they can eat into this nine-point lead. Ten minutes, 31 seconds to go. Moving left to right on your radio dial are the Eden Prairie Eagles. Just crossed the Timberwolves logo to Dobbs. Toss it to Kluge. Out front they get it to Andrews. Andrews pass it left side. Alpha gets it back out front top of the key. Here's a three, and it's no good. An air ball. Rebound's taken out by King. King will get it to Larson. Air ball was taken by Henry. Here's an NBA three by King. It's no good. Rebound taken out by Kluge. Lugie head up, brings it across the Timberwolf logo, left to right. Looks to his left. Now he's surveying the court. Running baseline is Dobbs. Lugie will just shoot an NBA three, and it's bottom of the net. Lugie swishes the three. His second of this game is 38th of the season, and we've got a six-point game with 940 to go. Larson looks to bring the ball up, passes it across the timeline. Here's a long three by King. It is no good. Rebound taken down by Christensen. That was another NBA three. Pass goes ahead. Going in for the shot, and they're going to have a blocking foul. Very late whistle there. <laughs> he was making the, or taking the shot after he went by Newton before the whistle blew. So at the free throw line is going to be John Henry, the 6'4 sophomore, averages 13 points, 5 rebounds, has just 4 points in this game. We near them all can really bang the glass. Eden Prairie was so good rebounding yesterday, being out-rebounded by 4, which is better than the first half. And the free throw's good. They're making the run, ladies and gentlemen. John Henry. Not old Henry, but Henry. There used to be the old Henry bar. I think they might still have those. I haven't had one in many years. 41-36. I'm sure they got them over at Cash Wise. And he hits the second one. Those are the first free throws this half for either team. 
We had a lot in the first half. It's 41-37. Running up the far sideline, we have a sub in the game for Creighton Durham Hall. It's Omari Carter back in the game. O'Toole drives baseline. Here's a three by King, no good. Or excuse me, Chapman. O'Toole got in there, and there's a stop, and we had uh, all kinds of whistles blowing, and they were still volleyballing the ball around. Nobody heard the whistle. No basket, they say. They have a foul on Kluge. It'll be a second. Three fouls on Creighton Durham Hall and one foul now on Eden Prairie. O'Toole has a way out front. There's nine minutes to go in the game. It's a four-point lead for Creighton Durham Hall. Larson passes the top of the key. They go underneath to O'Toole. He goes right to the basket. Missed it. Rebound taken out by nobody yet. Chapman has it for an instant. A couple of guys are trying to get the ball, and they're going to call a foul. Really never understood. Back in the day, we used to have loose ball fouls. Normally, these scrums for the ball, they don't call anything. They are calling a foul here. So they'll inbound it with 8 minutes and 51 seconds to go on the Garlic's Water Conditioning of Faribault Scoreboard. O'Toole on the inbound pass. Not much you can do about that. Just threw it up to the basket, and he just uh, kind of semi-stuffs it in. 43-37. I say semi because it wasn't really a slam, per se. A little touch into the basket. Here's a shot. No good. Taken by Andrews. Rebounds taken out by Prince. Prince falls down, throws the ball as he's falling. Eden Purry wanted a travel call, but I thought he threw the ball while he was falling. Between the two circles with a basketball for Creighton near them all, and they're going to start taking the air. The ball's Carter gets it to Prince. Now on the block to Oturu. He'll back up, face the basket, passes it out to Larson, top of the key. 43-37. Here's a shot that's good by Chapman. Remember, he hasn't scored much. He only has four points. It's 45-37. They punched it back up to an eight-point lead when it looked like Eden Prairie's going to make a run. Pass goes inside the lane. Shots up is blocked by O'Toole. Picked up by Kluge. Here's Kluge. Three, and it's good! Top of the key three from behind the NBA line by Kyler Kluge, the 6-1 senior. He's got three threes in this game. He's got 39 on the season. And we've got a five-point game with 7.46 to go on the Garlic's Water Conditioning of Faribault scoreboard. It's 45-40 Raiders on top of the Eagles. That's right. You know a water filtration system from Garlic can help with your problem water? Get the details at garlicswater.com. Now, i got a sense, a feeling, a bit of intuition here that Creighton Aram Hall, if they have a lead in a couple of minutes, is going to start milking clock, making those dairy producers proud. Woody County ADA reminds you to unleash dairy's potential with the power of protein. Taji Jewelry, downtown Kenyon. You don't want just any diamond. You want a Taji Jewelry diamond. We'll have our Taji Jewelry player or players of the game, courtesy of Taji Jewelry, downtown Kenyon. Also have some great Howard Miller grandfather clocks and all kinds of styles there. Myself, I've got a couple of them myself. Different styles. As O'Toole looked to drill penetrate, and they're going to call a foul on Eden Prairie. Pass comes way out front. They get it to Oturo on the free throw line. He's in the lane. He might have traveled and ends up scoring. He's got 10 second half points. He's got all but three of their field goals. They're kind of right. He missed Mr. Oturo. Three no good. Rebound taken down by Carter. Larson brings it up. They're going to have a foul on Kluge. It'll be his third. Seven minutes, 12 seconds to go. It's a seven-point game. I always say you have single digits at the four-minute mark, and it's a game. We're a ways from that. But Eden Prairie needs to get some stops here, turnovers. There's a rejection by Christensen of his shot. Pass to Prince. 
Prince in the corner to Carter. Carter back to Prince. Prince is directing traffic. Passes on the right side to Larson to get it to Chapman. Chapman spins, shoots, misses. Rebound O'Toole. He, he just knocked Andrews on the floor and ends up a little put-back basket. Does O'Toole. Well, whatever works. Out front, Kluge dribbles to his left, pass on the left side. Now, maybe he didn't knock him to the floor, but he was on the floor. A couple of left-handed dribbles by Dobbs. Gets a couple of screens. Here's another the three, and it's no good by Kluge. Rebounds taken down by <laughs> by the uh, Creighton Arrow Mall Raiders, and they're going to be in... Uh, no clock mode here in a second. Yep, Coach Klein telling him to spread the floor. Let's use a little clock on each possession here. We got the lead. Going down the lane. Shots up. Missed badly. O'Toole goes back up. He misses it. We have another foul called on Eden Prairie. They call this one on Andrews. His third. So O'Toole, Daniel O'Toole has a couple of fouls has just absolutely had a terrific second half. He had five points at halftime. He got 12 second half points. And he missed the free throw. The first free throw shot by Creighton Aram Hall this half. They punched it back up to a nine-point lead. If he makes this, they're back to double digits with 6.03 to go. Eden Perry, what can you do? You just don't have any 6'10 guys on your team. The plan was to kind of bottle up the lane. Well, Oturu can fight through that. He missed it. He wanted to work for his points. We had another look like tie up. <laughs> Klein, uh, Coach Klein is very animated on the sidelines. There's some officials that would not like that a whole lot. So, with six minutes and one second to go, we've got a timeout, a media timeout. Creighton Aram Hall on top, 49-40 on the Garlic's Water Conditioning Affairable Scoreboard. You'll love a Connecticut water softener. I love mine. Get yours, too. From Garlic's Water Conditioning Affairable, where the service is second to none, on the Garlic's Scoreboard. 49-40, Creighton Aram Hall, back in 30 seconds. Make it personal, make it Taji Jewelry. Awards by Taji and Kenyon can assist you in recognizing someone with plaques or trophies in a variety of styles and price ranges. Say thanks to a dedicated employee. Reward a son or daughter's accomplishments. Whatever the occasion, Taji Jewelry and Kenyon has the experience to assist in choosing the appropriate award. Teams throughout the area have used awards by Taji because they know the service is unmatched and the price is right. Wow. Up next, it'll be Apple Valley, the defending state champs in Class 4A. We'll have a new champion in 3A. If you missed it earlier today, it was a great game. Columbia Heights, man, can they rebound? Beat the Cell. Ending their long reign. Six straight years of state champs. They won't have a seventh one. They'll be playing in the third place game against the Austin Packers, who also lost. Those were the one and two seeds. The one and two ranked teams in the state went down. They went bye-bye. Delano beat Austin. Delano very physical. Columbia Heights likewise. That'll be interesting tomorrow. Or excuse me, Saturday. Yep, Saturday will be the 3A and 4A championships. They get a day of rest, and the little schools don't. Here's a shot by Prince. He scores, and he's fouled. Nice play out of the timeout. He's got seven points. I think the foul is on Andrews. That's his fourth. He missed the free throw. Rebound taken down by Christensen. They are 0 for 3 this half. Christensen couldn't handle the ball. He ends up turning it over. It's up to an 11-point lead with 5.40 to go in the game. Larson out front. Here's a three. It's no good. Rebound. O'Toole all over the back of Andrews. Not much question about that one be his third foul. He's played this whole half of those two fouls. As he's doing some lobbying on the other end of the floor. 
Dobbs gets it on the block to Andrews, who's had to work. Oh, nice. Scoop under the arm of O'Toole, so he couldn't block it. little underhanded scoop shot off glass. Chapman in the open floor, almost traveled. Gets it out to Larson. Larson. Ball stolen away, falling down as Andrews. They throw it ahead to Christensen. Layup is good. They got the turnover to get the layup. And it's a seven-point game with five minutes to go. And again, the trap is thrown on. I love it when teams do this. I love it. When they pick their spots to throw on that trap, it's so much more effective because you're not used to it. You're not comfortable, and good defense makes you feel uncomfortable. We got a timeout taken by the Raiders. 51-44, Creighton Durham Hall. Four minutes, 58 seconds to go. Back in 30 seconds. Pine Island Lumber appreciates the accomplishments of the high school athletes throughout the area. They know the hard work it takes. They can also relate to projects you may need to get completed around your home or farm. That's why the full-service lumberyard provides only quality building materials like Anderson Windows and Doors, a Minnesota company you can trust. Anderson Windows and Doors are made to order one at a time to your exact specifications. Anderson has high-performance, energy-efficient products. Pine Island Lumber is also known for their personal service with delivery and drafting and design services to assist in making your products Project click every step of the way. Make Pine Island Lumber your lumber yard. Yeah, we certainly appreciate Pine Island Lumber for bringing you our halftime report. Pine Island Lumber. Quality material, superb service. Pine Island Lumber wants to be your lumber yard. Matt Marine Auction Company at Kenyon. Also one of our fine tournament sponsors. Nobody does far more real estate auctions better than Matt Marine Auction Company. If you're thinking about having a farm or real estate sale, well, start by contacting MarryingAuction.com. You can always check out MarryingAuction.com for all their great sales. You got one going on, you know, this Saturday. You don't want to miss. Been hearing about it throughout our broadcast. <laughs> wow. Green Nerm Hall just turned the ball over. They just handed the ball, basically handed the ball to Eden Perrin. Lugie looks to dribble penetrate, being guarded by Larson, passes it out front to Dobbs. Dobbs will back up with a basketball. He's being guarded by Chapman. He's got big time length on him. Hands it off to Kluge. Kluge looks, looks, passes it to Andrews, passes it in the corner to Christensen. Christensen out front now to Kluge. It's a big possession here for both teams. Handoff goes to Kluge. Kluge gets it out top. Christensen back to Kluge, top of the key. Couple of dribbles. Left side taking the three Dobbs. Throws up the shot. is blocked by Oturu. Taken down by Andrews. Andrews scoop pass in the corner. It's a 15-footer. It's good! By Dobbs, who's had his... That's his first basket. He averages 18 a game. He's had his troubles with the 6'8 Chapman on him. I like this Chapman in terms of... You know, I mean, he averages 20 a game, and he's only got four in this one, but he's been playing good defense, too. Very good defense to hold Dobbs to one field goal. Handoff goes to Larson, bounces it on the block to Oturu, spins to go to the basket and just kisses it off glass. How do you stop that? Oturu showing some really good footwork. 53-46, he'll be a future gopher. Dobbs dribbles the free line. Kind of stutter steps, then gets it on the left side to get it back out front to Kluge. Kluge takes a couple of right-handed dribbles. There's Oturu, goes the other side of the basket. Here's a three, and it's good by Dobbs. Chapman threw the hand up. Dobbs still makes it. That's his 99th three of the season, and it's a four-point game. Here's a steal by Kluge. Kluge comes back left to right on your radio dial behind the back bounce pass in the corner for three, and it's good! Hitting the three for the Eden Prairie Eagles is John Henry. And guess what, folks? Creighton Durham Hall has a one-point lead with three minutes and four seconds to go. 53-52. Wow. What an incredible comeback. Sparked by the turnover and the efficiency on the other end of the floor. Being able to hit big prime time. Eden Prairie. That is impressive. Henry, by the way. Now has 80 threes on the season. For some reason, I didn't write his threes in my lineup like I did everybody else's. Silly me. So, Coach, 
Flum and Coach Jerry Klein Jr. Talking to their respective teams. Nice comeback here by Eden Bird. They were down double digits just a couple minutes ago. And now it's a 53-52 game. Creek near them all on top. I had a gentleman predict, a guy who knows his basketball, earlier that this would be an overtime game. <laughs> it looks like the 8 o'clock game is not going to start at 8 o'clock. Even if we don't go overtime. And that's typical with the uh, other media on hand. 53-52. We can get them home with inbound the ball. They're up by 153-52 with 3.04 to go. Pass comes into King, who's back in the game. Jaden King, there's no substitute for the quality you find it. Cash Wise Foods Oatana, your low price leader. Holding up one finger. They must have known I was talking about Cash Wise as Prince. Gets the ball back. Now has it on the left wing. Couple of right handed dribbles. Bounces it on the right side to Prince. Prince gets it to Oturu. Oturu trying to get it to Larson. They're going to have a foul called on Dobbs. Larson's a very good actor. <laughs> Uh, he just kind of leaned back like he was getting uh, delayed by Dobbs. I did not see that myself. So going to the free throw line is going to be Larson. <laughs> Larson has two for two for the charity stripe here today. If he makes these, it's a three-point lead. And he makes the first one. 49 of 71 on the season coming into this game. I did add in yesterday's stats. It's turned into a great game just as we thought it would be as Larson hits the second one. Free throw line is the difference. Five points for Eden Prairie. Ten points for Creek Darrell Mall and they're up by three. Dobbs going to shoot another three. He missed it. Rebound. Christensen went high for that one. It's tipped up. And in. What a tip in by Andrews in the middle of the lane. O'Toole is trying to get to it, too. He missed time to jump. 16 points for Andrews. And it's a one-point lead again for Creighton near them all. Eden Prairie doesn't want to foul here. There's 2.10 to go. Bounce pass underneath to O'Toole. He'll go stuff. O'Toole's. Making everybody in the crowd very happy that he's going to be a golden goal for Dobbs right in front of us. Passes it to Kluge. Gets a screen from Andrews. Kluge right side. Bounces it to Dobbs. Dobbs again. Much longer Chapman is on him. He's 6'8". Dobbs is 6 feet tall. Or at least that's what he's listed as. They tie up in the corner to my right here. They tie up Mr. Henry. And a timeout, I guess, was taken by Eden Prairie before the tie-up. One minute, 40 seconds to go. It's Creighton Durham Hall, 57. Eden Prairie, 54 on the Garlic's Water Conditioning Affordable Scoreboard. Log on to garlicswater.com and get a no-hassle, no-obligation quote or water analysis back in 30 seconds. Now is the perfect time for children to spruce up their eating habits by making more healthful choices at home and school. Consuming at least three servings of milk, cheese, and yogurt each day is a deliciously easy way to help kids maintain strong, healthy bones, muscles, and teeth. Dairy foods contain three of five nutrients that children don't get enough of. Calcium, potassium, and magnesium. Learn more at DairyMakesSense.com. Your local dairy farmers encourage you to enjoy nutritious, delicious dairy products. This message was brought to you by the Goodhue American Dairy Association. Yeah, the Goodhue ADA reminding us to take the Dairy Free For Me pledge. Add free servings of milk, cheese, or yogurt to your diet and power your day with protein. Fifty-seven, fifty-four is our score. Creek Durham Hall leads it. Eden Prairie inbounds the ball to Dobbs. Gets it in the corner for three. It's no good. Rebound popped up in the air. Taken down by... Well, looks like they're going to have a foul here. 
As Christensen got the ball, they say he was fouled. Looked like a tie-up over there. Going to be on Prince. His second. So Eden Prairie will inbound the ball. Kluge, Kluge throws it out front to Andrews. Andrews gets it to Dobbs. Minute and a half to go, a three-point game. Pass goes in the corner. Now they get it out top of the key. Back to Dobbs. Dobbs dribble penetrates, goes up, has it rejected. It looked like he got him with a body. Oturo did block it up top, but man, oh man. Well, maybe not. I guess not. It was a clean block. We just showed the replay. Bounce pass underneath. They got to send one guy toward him, and then when that guy, when Oturo goes to try and block a shot, he got to dump it off somebody else going to the basket. Shooting the shot. We're going to have a foul called on Chapman. His third. That was a smart play. I mean, a smart play by Dobbs. The sophomore will go to the free throw line for the first time tonight. It's a minute 11 to go. The crowd is asking for a three point, and I did not see what line he was behind. We'll see if they show the replay. They're going over to check it at the scorer's table. Yeah, it was a three-point shot, all right. You'll get three free throws. So Dobbs will get three free throws. He's got to make all three of these, and then we got a tie game and a minute 11 to go, and we'll see if Creighton Aram Hall goes for the last shot, makes those dairy producers over in Goodyear County proud, and milks the clock. Add three servings of milk, cheese, yogurt to your diet. Power your day with protein. Makes the first one. That's his sixth point. He averages 18. He's only a sophomore. They start three sophomores on the Seton Prairie team. Makes the second one. If I were a bet man, and I'm not, I would say that Creighton will go for the last shot. That's what I would do. And he missed the third one. Not really a big deal. It's a one-point lead. I guess it is a big deal if they make a couple of points. And now we're going to have a foul way out on uh, Oturu by Christensen. So they did that on purpose to get the ball back. Minute one to go. So that... Creighton couldn't go for the last shot. Checking in for the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders is going to be Jalen Newton. At the free throw line is Oturu, who's had a great second half. He's got 16 second half points. He's got 21 in the game. And it is good. Rims in. We got bodies flying all over the place. And a box out to get a rebound in case it didn't go through. Now, eight fouls called on Eden Prairie and six on Creighton Durham Hall. So the next foul by Creighton Durham Hall puts Eden Prairie in the bonus. One minute, one second to go in the game. It's a two point lead. This is the big one. It would force a three pointer to tie. Oturu's free throw is no good. Rebound tipped out. Oturu ends up with it, gets it back on top. Now they can milk clock. Larson has it out front, dribbles to his left, passes the top of the key. Chapman swings on the right side to Prince. Coach Flum telling his team not to foul yet. 44 seconds to go. They'd like to get a turnover if they could. We're going to have, uh, what are we going to have, a foul? I guess we've got a foul on Christensen. And he missed it. Oturu taps it to himself, falls down. May have been undercut. We'll see what the call is. Meanwhile, Christensen is in some pain. He hit his elbow right on the floor. 
He is really in some pain. He smacked that elbow on the floor. I can hear it over here. Well, he's going to stay on the floor. Christensen is. They called a foul on him, too, I think. And that means he's done. So they add injury to insult or insult to injury. <laughs> he's got to come out of the game. He's got 11 points. He, his elbow feels good enough to clap as he's leaving, leaving the court. Man, he really banged that hard. 40 seconds to go in the game. It's a two-point Creighton Durham Hall lead. So if Oturo hits both of these, well, it's still plenty of time, 40 seconds, I guess. You have to get a really quick hoop. Not being able to get some offensive rebounds. The last couple of trips has hurt Eden Prairie. That Creighton Durham Hall has so much size. Got 6'10". Oturo, he just missed a free throw, and he's only made two, and he's tried five. And he is, you know, about a 68 percenter of the year. That's going to have to prove in the next level. Teams know you can't shoot them. They're going to hammer you. And he missed the second one. Rebound Dobbs. They still got a chance. 36 seconds to go. I thought Coach Flum might take a timeout. Nope, they're going to let him play. Dobbs dribbles to his right. Dobbs wanted to turn the corner. Hands it off. They get it out front. There's 26 seconds to go. Now they get back out front to D.J. Johnson. Now they swing it back top of the key. Dobbs looks to dribble penetrate with 19 seconds. They bounce it with 16 seconds to Dobbs. Dobbs goes in attack mode left side to Andrews. Andrews in front of his coach, and they call a timeout with 9.8 seconds to go in the game. We're going to keep it here. We don't want to miss it. 9.8 seconds to go. 58 56, Creighton Durham Hall. As the brain trust at Eden Prairie is going to decide what they want to do here. It takes a three-pointer to win. A two-pointer puts it in overtime. And remember, one of your players just fouled out. Connor Christensen, who averages 11.6 rebounds, had 11 points in this game. And guess how many rebounds he has. 11! He's got 11 rebounds. Yep, he's got a double-double. So the guy with a double-double has to sit down and foul trouble. I wouldn't think that my chances would be too good in overtime. If I'm Coach Flum, I go for the win. You know, go for the triple. So, if you look at this shooting the three today, Larson's, oh, that's Creighton Nerve Hall. Kluge is three of seven. Really, nobody has shot it well. One for five, one for... Four, one for six. <laughs> oh, I don't know who you'd call on. Green and Prairie. Henry's got over 80 on the season. Dobbs is one away from 100 on the season. But again, nobody shot him well here. Here we go. My guess is Eden Prairie goes for all the marbles. Let's see. 58 56, 9.8 seconds to go in regulation. Kluge will inbound it. Andrews hands it off to Kluge. Kluge steps. Oh, they had a hurry. There's five seconds. Dobbs throws up a leaner. He missed it. Oturu gets a rebound. And there's a foul. And Creighton Aram Hall is going to head to the championship game. Creighton Durham Hall is going to head to the title game. Oturo is going to shoot free throws. It's only half a second. You can't get a shot off in that. So a little leaner in the lane. They didn't go for the three like I thought they would. And Oturo is going to go to the free throw line where he has not been good. But it doesn't matter at this point. He makes it. <laughs> not as much pressure, I guess. 59-56. You're not going to get a shot off in half a second. This game, for all intents and purposes, is over. I really thought they'd go for the free there, but 
That must have been what they were. Must have been what they drew, drew, uh, drew up. A little leaner by Dobbs in the lane. I thought they might go to Kluge because the threes he hit were straight on top of the key, you know. So I thought maybe they'd set a screen to get him open at the top of the key. It's one of the uh, Raiders is dancing behind the bench. And, of course, they just showed that in the arena. So the Raider fans are going nuts. 59-56, half a second to go in the game. Oturu will have his second free throw. He's been unbelievable. He's had one, two. He's had all but four of the field goals this half. He has 23 points, looking for number 24. And guy going to that level should be dominant at this level. They rode their horse, as they say. So Oturu's free throw, his second one, is good. That'll be the game. Eden Prairie inbounds it. Your score is 60-56. to 56. Greeting near them all. Rank number one in the state has a chance to prove it on championship Saturday. They win it over Eden Prairie, 60 to 56, and avenge one of their two losses during the season when they lost by 265-63. Eden Prairie had their chance to tie it. I had the chance to win it too, and they decided to go for a three, but they decided to try and send it into overtime. And then take their chances, I guess. Up next, there'll be Lakeville North, Apple Valley. You're scheduled for an 8 o'clock start. Obviously, won't be that time. You're in tune to KDHOAM, Faribault, Minnesota. We need to select our Taji Jewelry, and I don't think there's any question who our Taji Jewelry player, at least one of them, is going to be. <laughs> the guy took the team on his back. Yep, Daniel Oturu, the 6'10 senior. That's a big back to take a team up on. Going to be a future Golden Gopher. Yesterday he had 24 points, 9 rebounds, and 1 assist. And today, guess what? He has 24 points, 12 rebounds, and 1 assist. He was 10 of 15 from the field. He was 4 of 9 from the free throw line. Daniel Oturu will be at least one of our Taji Jury of Kenyon players of the game. Taji Jury has a number of Howard Miller grandfather clocks that he'd like to get out of the store, so swing by soon. I saw them. Terrific variety of styles. As Apple Valley is coming on the floor, and so are the Lakeville North Panthers. We'll have that game next here on the Mighty 920. I'll have a quick wrap of the stats courtesy of H&R Block. We'll take a brief break, and then we'll come back. And bring you Lakeville North and Apple Valley and all South Suburban semifinal here in Class 4A during our 70th consecutive year of baseline to baseline coverage of the Boys State High School Basketball Tournament. We'll look at those stats after this one minute timeout. Time only, you could get a refund advance loan of up to $3,000 the same day you file at Block. That's right. You could get up to $3,000 today. No interest. Told you it was good news. To learn more or find participating locations near you, visit hrblock.com. Get your taxes one. Optional tax refund related loan from B of I Federal Bank. Not your tax refund. $500, $750, $1,250, or $3,000 loans offered. Approval of loan amount based on expected refund and other conditions. Funds loaded on prepaid card. Tax returns may be e-filed without applying for this loan. Fees for other products or features may apply. Another money-saving secret from Arm & Hammer. My name is Malena. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I love Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Plus Scent Laundry Detergent. It cleans really well. It doesn't irritate my skin, and it smells wonderful. Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Plus Scent has a skin-friendly scent people love, so it's preferred 2 to 1 over the leading free and clear detergent, and it costs up to 30% less. We've been on a very tight budget lately, so it's a no-brainer. The clean you need at a fraction of the cost. Wow, what a great game that ended up being. I mean, they were up double digits, five minutes to go. They got it down to a chance to tie and send it into overtime or win if you take a three. Did uh, 
to the Eden Prairie Eagles, but the final score is I was just handed the paper stats, 60-56, to 56, Creighton Miram Hall. I already told you Daniel Tulu had a double-double, 24 points, 12 rebounds. He's definitely one of our Taji Jury players of the game. And our other one will be Ryan Larson, the very physical point guard for the Creighton Miram Hall Raiders, had 18 points and 7 assists in today's game. And he played every ticky-tock of the clock. He was the only guy to play every minute for Creighton Aram Hall. Eden Prairie had Kluge play every minute. Dobbs played every minute. Andrews played every minute. And, of course, Christensen fouled out with about a minute to go. He had three guys in double figures, 16 for Austin Andrews, along with six rebounds and three assists. Connor Christensen had the double-double, 11 points, 11 rebounds. And Kluge had 13 points, three rebounds, as well as seven assists in the game. Ten turnovers for Eden Prairie and 15 for Creighton Durham Hall. But the Raiders win it thanks to 49% shooting for the field. Eden Prairie was 40% the difference, the free throw line without a doubt. Creighton Durham Hall was 13 of 21. And Eden Prairie was 7 of 13 for the charity stripe. Our stats are a service of H&R Block. They've got offices in Lakeville, in Owatonna, and in Faribault. At H&R Block, they know taxes. At H&R Block, you get your maximum refund guaranteed.